I want to start off with a few, I don't know what you'd call them, maybe brain teasers or, quote, or jokes, maybe. So if you can answer back to me, all right? Answer as fast as you can, don't think about it. How many animals of each did Moses take on the ark? None, Noah did. Sorry. How do you pronounce the capital of Kentucky? Louisville or Louisville? No, it's Frankfurt. Sorry. What does M-A-C-D-O-N-A-L-D spell? McDonald, good. What does M-A-C-G-R-E-G-O-R spell? McGregor. What does M-A-C-H-I-N-E-R spell? You're really smart. It spells machinery. Not McHenry, it spells machinery. I know, I know. Okay, last one, sorry. Is it egg yolk is white or egg yolks are white? See, you guys are catching on. That's why I quit after a page. Now, I'm, today I'm going to be talking about kingdom thinking. And the reason I said those is to prove a point. Our minds automatically default and have pathways that lead us thinking one direction. It's funny how our brains do that, but what happens is these brain pathways are, are created through life situations. They're created through influences in our lives. They're created through, have you ever asked yourself, why do I do these things that my parents used to do? There's a reason why. But before I jump in there, um, I, I wanted to just offer something encouraging. And I think the Bible verse is up there in Genesis. Uh, it's Genesis 1, 26 through 28. And before, I, I figured before we started plowing a bit, I wanted to encourage your hearts and remind you. Sometimes it's hard for us to, to picture all of us in this situation, but you are a child of God. Like your identity needs to have I am a child of God as the foundation, as the walls, and as the roof. And everything that we do flows out of that identity. And I'm going to read it. I actually I wrote it down in the Common English version because it's one of my favorite ways it, it speaks. But it says, is it up there? Perfect. That's really long. Let God... Then God said, let us make humanity in our image to resemble us so that they may take charge of the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the livestock, all the earth, and all the crawling things on earth. God created humanity in God's image. In the divine image, God created them. Male and female, God created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and master it. Take charge of the sea, of the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and everything crawling on the ground. I think it's important for us to take a step back and, and you see how God gave Adam dominion over the earth. God gave Adam dominion over his realm in that moment. But then what did Adam do? Adam, Adam gave that dominion back, right? But then through Jesus, Jesus victoriously gave it back to us. And I'm just going to just pray here as that sinks in for our minds, Father. Holy Spirit, right now, we welcome your presence. I pray, Holy Spirit, that, that we, can, we can look through the eyes of Jesus this morning. That today is a day that changes our life forever. Father, I ask that you bless every person here and continue just pouring in identity, Father. Loving on each and every person here. In Jesus' name, amen. I, I wanted to say that initially because Everyone here needs to understand 
When, you, when we start thinking about kingdom thinking, you have to understand there's no lesses and no mores of people. Does that make sense? There are, there are no people that are at a higher, at a higher level than other people. We're on the same playing field. And the sooner we realize that, the more this kingdom's gonna continue to progress. Because you have the power of God inside of you. It's not for one or two or three people. You have the power of God inside of you. When we know we have the power of God inside of us, you can't help but not use it. As I was, as I was praying this week, and I, I, I might say it again later, actually I won't, but I, w- I was thinking about, I, I'm at my work, I'm eating some yogurt. And I was going to bring yogurt, but I forgot it. And of course I didn't have a spoon. But what did I have? I had a fork. Have you ever eaten yogurt with a fork? <laughs> and in that moment, I believe God spoke to me. He said, Christianity without the gifts is like eating yogurt with a fork. You're not going to get all of Christianity if you don't include the gifts. You can, get, you can come to church and you can have part of your yogurt, but just watch it slip through. And what we want, we want to see you walk in the fullness of what God's called you to. If we can jump to the next slides. I think... It, actually, I, I'm, Philippians 2.14 talks about grumbling and complaining. And the reason I had we are in Christ first because this, this kind of preps up where we're going to go. And we are called to find, let's say, the positives in everything. Don't allow small things in life to, to allow you to grumble and complain because you can only do one of either. You can either grumble and complain or you can rejoice and praise. You can't do them both at the same time. It's not possible. And the Bible calls us to do not grumble and complain. So that doesn't give it, that, that eliminates any excuse that we've put in our lives to grumble and complain in certain situations. So don't allow that. Our perception, a lot of times, is our own reality. So that's what I want to talk about this day. We want to change perceptions of our minds. If we can pull up those verses here. I don't know if you've ever looked at a word study between perfect and complete. Have you ever read the Bible verses that says, be perfect as I am perfect? I'll read them here. Matthew 5, 48 says, therefore, you shall be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. John 17, 23 says, in them and you in me that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Hebrews 7.19 says, For the law made nothing perfect. On the other hand, there is the bringing in of a better hope through which we draw near to God. 1 John 4.12 says, No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, another, God abides in us and his love has been perfected in us. Who here is perfect? But wait a second. Jesus says, be perfect as I'm perfect. So does that make sense to you? You know what that word means? That word means complete. So look at that. Look at those verses a little bit different. You are fully complete because he is fully complete. You will never be perfect. And that's the problem sometimes that we have when we think of holiness, is we think that I need to be perfect in order to achieve this, when in all reality, you are complete because he's complete. You are complete because of what he did at the cross. You're perfect in every way because you are created in the image of God. And God did not mess up on you. Think of how great God is. And he brought you here today. He thought enough about you to bring you on this planet today. You have a purpose. 
I was trying to go through examples in my mind. And, and you, you think of so many things, and I don't know how Pastor Jake does it weekly, because how do you put all your thoughts on one page, or how do you prepare without getting sick? You know, there's so, so many things that go on in it. But the perception, your perception being your reality is so true. Anybody that lives in the city can see stars. When you go out to the country, do you know how many stars you see? You may think, living and growing up in the city, this is the, all the stars they are. You go out to the country, come to my house once, and you're going to see so many stars that my reality of stars is different than somebody else's that stays in the city. Does that make sense? Come on. Man. Life in the spirit is a lot less of what, happened, what has happened to us and a lot more about the way we perceive what is happening and the way we respond to what happens to us. Let me read it again slowly. Life in the spirit is a lot less of what happens to us and a lot more about the way we perceive what is happening and the way we respond to what happened to us. Why is that? because of who we have in us. As our perspective changes to focus on him, all the other stuff that falls away changes. Do you remember a time when seatbelts weren't in cars? Do you remember a time when people would sit in the trunk? <laughs> sit, in the, <laughs> sit, in the back of a, sit in the back of the truck? Right. You know when people, I was talking to somebody at work and they said they had Six people and their family in a car. The youngest kid sat out front between the parents because, well, where else are you going to squeeze in? So they built a box for him. No seatbelt. They built a box for him in the front seat so he could see over the windshield. Perfect. So he could projectile straight out that windshield if something happens. <laughs> but you know what? It was okay because everyone did it. Nobody thought twice about it. And now if you were to do that, good luck. We will minister you, to you in jail. Yes, right. it, I mean, it, it's funny how things change because things are acceptable. The church has done this. The church has done this. Things are the same way because it is acceptable. Read the word of God. Is it acceptable or is it not? And you'll see a common theme kind of rolling through this where we need to hold the truths or things that come against us in our lives up to the light of the word of God. Everything. No matter how small it is. So I was driving to work one morning. You know this is going to be good. And have you guys ever had, like, cut off somebody on accident? Like, literally, on accident. You, you didn't see them merging in onto the merge lane. You're like, oh, sorry, sorry. You, you try to wave at them. You're like, oh, I hope they saw all fingers. You know, it's like, please. <laughs> You know, you're, you're really trying to be careful and sorry as they go by you. And all of a sudden, they're, they're like, cut you off. And you're like, oh, jeez, I, really, I'm sorry. I didn't try to. And then all of a sudden, you start thinking, wow, now they're going really slow. Man, this person has a problem. I can't believe they are doing this to me. I mean, don't lie. Everyone's been in this bowl, right? Maybe you're the slow driver. I don't know. But all the way to work, I'm complaining about this person. I'm complaining about, man, they could pick it up. I know they're just driving slow because they know I'm behind them now. And if I cut across the lane, they're probably going to cut me off. And my mind's going, and my mind's going. And all of a sudden, I think, you know what? I'm kind of doing the same thing he is in my mind. And people of the world might see my actions as well. And people of the world might, this guy in the car might say, I don't believe in God. And I might say, I'm a follower of Christ. But to the people watching this, they won't know a difference. Ouch. 
And that's the importance of understanding every moment that we live in is just a moment to honor our Father. Because I, I could finish that trip, I could go to work, and I could pray for every person in that building. I could see miracles. I could prophesy all for them. But the guy that was cutting me off needed Jesus just as much as they do. I saw this firsthand in the winter when I was with Nevea once, and a car literally in the snow went past me, and I mumbled something out loud, and at that moment flew in front of me and crashed right into the ditch. Ever since that moment, Father, they're going really fast, but protect them. Because it is serious. Back in the garden, Adam and Eve failed by going after the fruit. And what did they do when they failed? When they had a moment that they thought that they failed, they ran from God. They tried to hide their hearts. The funny thing is, is God asked them where they were at. Uh, we don't know. He knows everything. And you look at David and Peter. What did David and Peter do in a moment of failure? They ran to the Father. There's a moment coming in church. We need to be transparent. We need to be transparent with our hearts to the Father. Because that's where you're going to grow. That's where you're going to begin to see breakthrough in your lives is when you can honestly say, I messed up. I'm not perfect, but I'm complete in you. So I can run to the altar, I can fall on my knees, and I can come to you with just as much acceptance as when I read my Bible all week and came to church. That's the hope. If anyone preaches to you a gospel that does not say this is too good to be true, don't believe it. Because the grace of God is too good to be true. Don't minimize what the grace of God did for us on that cross. And don't ever, when I talk about the grace of God, it never involves a habitual trying to sin, obviously. But I say that because when you're caught in sin, you need to have a place to go. You need to admit it. You need to, you need to come clean and say, Father, this is me. Partner with someone. Because it's life, guys. And that's what's exciting, is every Sunday you'll see people lined up that are willing to partner with you. They're willing to walk with you through the week with it. Seriously. You want to be set free. You want to see your kids set free. You want your family set free. You get to do it. It's just, it's the key to our victory. Some things in our life we need to consciously do until it happens consciously. Read your Bible. There's patterns in our life, and, and actually, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna read this study. I have all these notes, because I, I double everything because I'm afraid of something not working, and it's probably not even biblical. Who knows? <laughs> but I, I, I'm reading this, because this is a scientific study that two doctors did, okay? It says, the simple truth of the matter is that most people are not aware that they are recycling yesterday's old news. It has been said that by the time we are 35 years old, up to 90% of what we think, feel, and do is recycled from our past. At first blush, this can sound a bit depressing, but it's true. We're creatures of habit and as such, tend to take the path of least resistance whenever possible. We develop beliefs and habits of behavior pertaining to our relationships, money, career, health, driving, dressing, fitness, and our bodies. I added religion to that one. They didn't have it in there. We then look to confirm and validate these beliefs in our everyday experiences. Habits are helpful in the case of driving a car, mastering a work skill, or learning a computer program. However, they can be highly limiting 
when applied to our relationships, bodies, happiness levels. This is one reason why many people set the same goals each year about getting fit and eating healthy. Rest assured, change is absolutely possible. Yet in order to stop recycling old habits of eating or exercising, you need to understand how to rewire your brain. Do we have any of the, the verses on rewiring your brain? I have them printed here otherwise. First one, 2 Corinthians 5.17. Just listen to these and think about what we just read. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. And put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Romans 12, 1 through 2, I love this verse. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. When the Bible and science line up. Which if you look through the word, it does a little more probably than you think. It's the reason we need to be born again. There's pathways in our mind that we've allowed to be established that are of the old mindset. We even walk, and, and, and you, it's why it's so important, I think at least, to be careful what you're listening to and watching because these pathways begin to, to be created in your mind and you start to live life out of it. Think of a, uh, I don't know, hunters here. I hunt, okay? You know, you can, you can literally teach a deer where to walk on a path by stopping where they used to walk. Say you have to get to work. Say you have to walk. And you're not walking for sake of beauty. You're just walking to go fastest from point A to point B. You're used to walking on the sidewalk Maybe it took you 20 minutes. But you notice one day walking to work that there was a field that you could cross. Say it would save you five minutes. I don't know. Your first time walking through that, the weeds are going to be tall. You're probably going to be a little more effort to it. You'll make it through. You probably can't see a path. The next day you do it again. The next day you do it again. The next day you do it again. Eventually what happens? You have a path worn down where anybody could see where you walked because you continue to walk that path. I'm telling you, it's the same way our brains are. If you continue to grumble and complain in your mind, guess what happens? Everything is a negative outlook. So you change that with the praise of the Father. That person cuts me off and I say, Father, bless them. Father, protect them. Father, I pray for their family. I pray for if they're married, I pray for their spouse and just prophetically speak into their life. And you know why we do that? Because when that moment comes against you, when you're in a challenging moment, what happens is those pathways that you've established are what you automatically default to. And that's the reason why we continue to struggle with the same sins over and over. We don't focus, we got to quit focusing on the sin. Quit focusing on it. Focus on the Father and the sin falls aside. I mean, that's kingdom thinking. Because there's victory in the king. Don't ever give yourself permission to act less than Christ-like because of the things going on around you. Or you're saying... What's going on around you is more important than what's happened and what's been done in you and for you by Jesus. Think about that. Every moment, it's because of Jesus. It's a way of the victory. The more I give myself permission to use circumstances as an excuse to act a certain way, I guess it's just what I'm going through. Uh Uh-uh. Don't allow a circumstance to control your reaction. 
what are you going through, has no right to invalidate what the Word of God clearly calls you to. And when I was thinking about kingdom thinking, I just wrote some bullet points. I know I'm cutting short on time here already, but kingdom thinking doesn't just automatically happen. And the sooner that we can train in our kids to have a kingdom mindset, you're setting them up for success. You're setting them up to have a perspective on life that will, that will guide them, that will protect them through uh, many situations. But when I think of kingdom thinking, Jesus' ministry was active yesterday, is active today, and will be active tomorrow. And this is why we need to understand this in our minds, because you are called to minister to this world, each and every one of you. You have a sphere of influence where you can speak into their lives, you can pray for them, and as you continue to seek his face in intimacy, you're going to see changes in your influences. It's generational. The, the easiest example is your kids. It's generational. Kingdom thinking is generational because you're never living for yourself in this moment. You're living for their future. You're living for victory in their lives and the people they're going to affect and their children. Kingdom thinking is love through the eyes of the Father. Everything we do has to roll out of the love of the, from the Father. Jesus' suffering was during a moment, but his decision affected every single generation to come. I was talking to somebody that does a lot of running, and I know, right? We could limit it. No. <laughs> Don't narrow it down. But there was a cool concept that they had mentioned to me. They said what they do in their group is, is each person puts together five songs. Why do you think they put together five songs? Each person puts five songs together, they put them in a pool, and you all listen to each other's songs. So when you're running, you hear I the Tiger, you're thinking of me running. When you're running, somebody else's song comes on, you're running for them. We're not running for ourselves, guys. Look around you. These are the people that we're running with right this moment. We had the opportunity to run a, a race. And it makes me think of the Red Rover, Red Rover. You know, when you stand like this, people have to break through. We run like that. We run linked together. If we get too far ahead of each other, it just doesn't work that way. Somebody's going to start falling down. So we got to learn to partner with each other and disciple each other and, and, and say, hey, you know what? This is an area we can grow in and trust each other's hearts. Humility is a key to kingdom thinking. There's two different scenarios. If you see, if you have a brother and you can talk to them or somebody comes to me and says, Nate, you got this issue. I can do two things. I say, yeah, right. Look at yourself. Figure it out your own, on your own. Or I can say, like David and Peter did, Father, I messed up. And I can appreciate the love of that brother or sister coming in my life and saying, you know what? I honor you so much more than to watch you wallow in what you're wallowing in right now. Because kingdom thinking is kingdom thinking. It's not, I'm worried how your feelings are right now. It's trusting each other's hearts and saying, they love me through the love of Christ. And we can grow in that. These pathways that, that we create on our own by, by just thinking constantly negative thoughts are not good. How about we think positive thoughts? How about, I never saw healing, so healing isn't for today. Show me that in the Bible. That's something you've told yourself so many times that you believe it. But there's breakthrough there. 
And I can say it's for today because I've been healed before. So nobody could ever tell me that it's not possible. Well, prophecy was only for the apostles. Really? It's about time we pull out the, the rototiller. I mean, it's springtime now, right? So we can do the, I, I recommend the back end rototiller because you can really get deep with that one. And put everything to the light of the scripture. Father, in this moment, is this glorifying your name? Or is this justifying my agenda? Kingdom thinking is only doing and saying what the Father says, period. And doing all with the vision of his kingdom advancing. Just as a farmer tills the field and fertilizes and plants each harvest, but yet doesn't see the crop until the end of the year. This moment is to, to till and to fertilize, to allow watering, to see what that fruit's going to be. And sometimes you don't even get to see what that is. But you have to know that you're doing it for the kingdom. The reality is we have allowed our personal experiences skew what we think of the kingdom of God and how we think it should work. I just pray that the way this has changed my thoughts just on life has messed me over for at least a month now. And I honestly didn't even know where exactly to go today. I, I literally typed up 10 pages of notes. And, and, and it's not because I, I even plan on going through all of them but it's because the Father continues to reveal little nuggets. And this is what I wanna encourage you in, because as you seek the Father, you need to seek the Father. That's how, that, what's happening at church is because of what's been set up, yes. But even greater what's happening is because I believe people's personal lives are drawing closer in intimacy to the Father. And as you continue to draw an intimacy with the Father, you come here and it overflows. And hearts are immediately changed. As I was praying through just speaking, I was wondering to myself why we even bow to the acceptance of diseases. Like, why, why do we even allow a headache to be okay? Is that because we don't have faith to heal it? Or we're not relying on the Father for it? And the reason I say this is because I, I, I don't see anywhere in the scripture that aligns with, well, God... It's just going to happen. I don't need to do anything about it. It's, it's not your job to make sure somebody's healed. It's your job to be a tool. It's your job to pray for someone. It's not, your, it's not your job to reason with somebody else and explain why they didn't get healed. It's your job to be the love of the Father in that situation. Because if they didn't get healed, at least they heard the Father's heart. I know I'm at time, but I want to just, I want to offer a chance to say, Father, you know what? I have literally been going to church on Sunday mornings to go to church. Like, I have done it out of duty. I've gone to church because that's what we do. And I have a pathway there, which is good. That's a good pathway. But Father, change the way that I see the scripture. Change the way that I see situations. And, and just allow my heart to say, Father, is this you? 
Or is this what man has told me to do? So as Caitlin plays, I just want us to open up our hearts. And just be in this moment with Holy Spirit. And as that last song played, Father, we're here for you. There's no situation on this earth that can take me away from your love. we have the prayer team come forward and what I, what I want to do if you feel like maybe you've continued to stumble in the same mile that you have you just feel like you keep going back to it over and over for no unexplainable reason it's just all of a sudden I react and I go back to that moment. Or a moment triggers this decision all the time. That right there is a light bulb that should go on in your head and say, that's a bad path that I have. Let's intentionally redirect that path and intentionally create a new path with the Father's help. So if there's anything that Holy Spirit has prompted in your heart or in your mind that says, Father, I need to change that. Father, I need work in that area. Here are the partners that I talked about. They want to pray with you. They want to partner with you as I, as I close in prayer. Father God, we thank you for your presence. We thank you, Father, that every day you smile upon us and every day you, you continue to grab us and pull us alongside. I pray that we can reflect you, Jesus, in our communities, that we can be examples of you, that we can express your love to everybody in every situation that our minds no longer go back to the old past or the old things that we were used to, that our minds are truly renewed, that our minds rewire with your help. Because it's the reason we had to be born again. All of a sudden, with our new nature, we are children of God. You have a call on your life. You just have to embrace that call. So if, it, if, if God's spoken anything to your heart, come forward, get prayer. If you haven't experienced the relationship with the Father that, that maybe even you know needs to be a little bit more. Come up and get prayer. Because today is the day. This week's going to be the best week ever. Because it's all perspective, man. It's all perspective. All right. So come on forward. I'm going to close. Have an awesome week. Go get them. Shine the light of Jesus. And truly be his mere reflection. In Jesus' name.